Approaching the 3,600-foot level, the summit, the climate becomes subarctic. In 98, a writer for Harper's Weekly wrote, the eye catches the movement. The mountain is alive. There's a continuous moving train. They are perceptible only by their movement, just as ants are. Never did men look so small. Martha Louise Black, who climbed the pass the same year, described it in more graphic terms. The Chilkoot is the worst trail this side of hell. Today, a single ascent is challenge enough for most. But at the time of the gold rush, it was commonplace to make the journey 20 times, up and down the pass. The alternative route was the White Pass, Regardless of which pass you took, Lake Bennett was the immediate goal. Head of navigation for the Yukon River, it's a mere 500 miles to Dawson City, heart of the Klondike. Up to 30,000 stampeders spent the winter here, waiting for the ice to melt. It did the following May, the 29th to be exact. Meanwhile, you could build a boat all you had to do was cut down the trees, haul them to a site near the water, whipsaw the lumber into planks, assemble your boat, and seal the cracks. And then, wait for the ice to melt. And when they were not building boats, they built this church. When the ice melted, the boats were launched, and the stampeders were gone, and so too was the congregation. The 110-mile narrow-gauge railroad to Whitehorse, Yukon Territory was completed in July of 1900. July 29th, 1900. The last spike was driven. After more than two years hard labor, the White Pass and Yukon Railroad was open for business. The Daily Alaskan described the completion of the 110-mile marathon as an epic in transportation affairs of the North. The first passenger train is through. The first to make the continuous run from Skagway to Whitehorse. Too late for the majority of the Stampeders, but not for the many thousands of tourists that travel the route today. 